Okay. Okay, the clock is running right now. So, on the last session, the last session, um, I just got to write all this. This is how Subhana manages data inside. So basically, this is column-based storage. Is all of this. This is the thing, I wonder if there is a way I can move horizontally using I don't know right now. Sunday.
Listen. Okay. Pression, this is a bit one. Uh, I do remember this one from yesterday. Yeah, that, that is complex column by column, not complex as This is basically a crouch, uh, like a, like a, a, an automatic normalization procedure internally. I do remember this one. Yeah, for example, here we may have a list of users or probably workers or office men, you know, and we may like to store whatever department do they belong to, you know, and, and sometimes people just add the department column to the employees table. That's more than enough in some cases, uh, but uh, this is going to, I think it violates the second normal form rule, which basically uh, tell us to avoid repeating uh, the same values over and over again. Uh, I think that's the second rule. I don't remember. Uh, basically you see this, see this, uh, Index one values development, index two the values development is repeating over and over again. But the actual value uh it remains the same here, you know. So um we kinda don't like to do this because searching and gathering data becomes really slow because you need to what happens if you want to select every people, um everybody from from the consultant department. In this case, the database engine is going to make a, a text comparison uh, value by value, row by row, in order to get everybody. Or for example, let's see, give me all the, uh, all the support people on this table here. Number four, number one is from the support table. Is development equal to support? No. Next one, is development equal to support? No. Is consulting equal to support? No. Is support equals to support? Yes. But in order to compare this, um, uh, if the first letter, for example, sales and support, uh, they share this, the same first letter, then the comparison is going to do this, basically. It's going to be character by character. This is not an entire value on its own, basically. I'm going to compare, okay, the S is equal to the S from support? Yes. Then, Going to compare A to U and so forth. So there are ways faster to do this. For example, 
let's actually uh, use this. Like this, for example, that's what they have here. And let's say, that's it. So we have an index. And let's say this is going to be one, two, three, dot, 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 whatever comes next. And the actual value, is going to be in this case development. Let's just put dev. Dev again. Consulting. Uh, support. Sales. Again, dev. Sales. So forth. Okay. Uh, maybe I should actually find taking the liberty to do all that. Just four, five, six. There we go. So this is my table here. So in this case, what Hannah is doing right here is normalizing this. How? Well, if I know that I have uh, several values, for example, this one here. This one here and this one here. They are all, these three are the same, basically. So what I can do here is, you know what? Instead of, uh, of leaving this value here, why don't we just extract this entire column and create another table with a cat cataloging these values because they are not random. This is a list of values, of predefined values. So if you see this only work, what I'm about to do only works when uh, um, you have a column and you have predefined values for this column. If it's a, an open-ended column, you say uh, uh, any type of um, uh, something that is not being cataloged, for example, that's not going to work. But in this case, uh, this is a departments table. And what we can do here is basically, um, can I actually copy this? Say something. Yeah, thank you. How do I paste it though? How do I paste it from my this? No. I don't know how to paste. No, okay, no. Control V. Oh no. Never mind. What? what happened? Just going to do the shape thing. What? Going on? Ah, oh. I messed up. But let's try to fix it. Something like that. Wait, is copying things? Oh no, no. That should do it. Okay, so now. Uh, I'm missing the line here. Wow, that's not what I was hoping to get. Okay, it's less awful. So again, I'm going to have my index here. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to catalog in another table. Let's say this is the department's table. The department's table, and this is the employee's table. So to speak, you know. We are assuming that there are more fields here. So what I'm going to do is, you know what? I'm going to create my department index here. And I'm going to create an entry for the first one. It's going to be called Dev. What? Wait. Okay, it's going to be called Dev. Awful Dev. There we go. Uh, the first one is going to be called Dev. And instead, I'm going to be removing. Let's copy. This to avoid losing anything. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is clear some of this. Yeah. There we go. So, so I made a copy of the same table for because I'm going to do this. So I created, oh, come on. I created a catalog here. This is the first entry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace on this table all of these dev entries for the number, for the index here. So what is going to happen is, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do it. That's why I copied the table because I'm going to do it here. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to replace it with this. Okay. I'm going to del and I'm going to repeat this for the other entries. And now this value column cannot be the same string type, you know. Because I am introducing values. So the type of this in the original table, I guess it was called it's this was a string, an str, a bar char, or or something like that, you know. Okay, so but this this field was of type string before. So I'm going to need it to be an, an integer now, a number. A number type is required for this field in order to work. Okay, so I'm going to replace uh, the depth with ones from the other table, from the from the from the department's table catalog. Yes, and now I'm going to create a second entry for the consultancy for the consulting department, and I'm going to replace. The, the single entry, the two. And now I'm going to repeat that with the support department. And I'm going to replace the support entry with the in the, the since this index belongs to another table, in the jargon of database uh, design, we call this foreign indexes. Or foreign keys because they come from a foreign table it's not proper for for this table here so what what's going on is that we keep uh making entries here and we are actually replacing all of those here okay and that's that's just fine okay but this is being done by the SAP HANA database engine automatically. More like automatically, in my opinion. So this is called normalization. And basically what SAP HANA is doing for us is, you know what? Even if you don't uh, recognize that this is um, an issue in design, so to speak, because I had seen a lot of tables that actually had this issue. Um, 
then Safhana is going is going to fix it for you uh, under the table or um, behind the camera or whatever else you know? um, under the hood. That's uh, the phrase I'm looking for. Okay. So basically, instead of having a single table um, with a column that describes the name of the department, I may have two tables. One that uh, actually I'm going to move this one. There we go. For example, this number goes here, this number goes here, there we go, and again, this number goes here. So that's basically what is going on here, with green, no. Uh, two is going here in order to make this less complicated I'm going to use another color I guess uh, task number two uh, number three goes here can be blue I guess and number four finally goes over here can be Hello, gray, something like that. It's, it doesn't matter. There we go. Orange. So that's what's going on. So I am dividing. Uh, wait, wait. Okay, so. That's what's going on, okay? Uh, and basically, we do this in a diagram shape form like this. We represent in, sometimes we represent we make the, the work like this some, sometimes, sometimes. This is the, uh, yeah, it's over. This is the name of the entity, let's say an employee, and we have the catalog table or the cataloging uh, entity, so to speak. And this is the department. This is the department table. Okay. So, and we tend to Say, you know what? Uh, one of the columns here is going to, this entity it does have a relationship with this other entity. So we represent that with a with an arrow most of the some of the times, okay? Uh, depending on what you are actually using, it's going to be an arrow, sometimes it's like a, like a tree branch, something like that. Doesn't matter right now. So this is what's going on. Okay, time, time for a short break, I guess. Okay, I wonder if I can uh, play something right now while we wait. Try to try. Oh, come on. Yes. So I got to even hear the didn't got my headphones anyway, that's why. 
hear anything. Right there. So what I like to do during my study sessions is play video games. Did it work? Oh. Whoa, close call. No, oh, didn't work. Well, maybe next time. Something happened now. The clock is running, so I try to debug that one for the next rest, but I don't think I'm going to be doing any any gaming here. Yeah, it breaks. I don't know why. Yeah, who cares? Well, doesn't really matter. Looks like uh, Liu Jinx decided not to work today. Probably for the better. The other hand, I think I can... Uh, Well, let's see what's on Twitter. Doesn't matter. I I just have like a couple of minutes before the game. Okay, you know, it's quite cool. Mm-hmm. Just one minute. I wonder what's happened to to this. Yeah, something broke. With the new version, I guess. Yeah, it looks like the new version is broken or something. Yeah, never mind. Cheers. Hey, time is about to go on. Oh my god, the pen! I wonder why I didn't hear the uh, the alarm. Let me see if 
Nine, eight, five, five, four, three, one. No. Nope. Alarm That's interesting. Anyway, I already know. Well, so at least I could. Uh, I just solve it right now. Uh, okay, so that's the that's the thing here. This is called normalization. Uh, they call it compression here because you can basically do this all day long because uh, the columns are basically single tables. You know. Uh, it's column-based storage, which means that this model can be replicated uh, any number of times. Uh, in the end, we are working with uh, tables with two columns all the time internally. So I call this a crutch because um, it, I know, I understand why it exists. And when we are doing things way uh, faster, way too quickly, we tend to step aside from designing time, you know. We don't want to spend too much hours designing a database. In my own experience, that time, no matter how big it seems to be, pays very well. Uh, an example of that is uh, a system uh, that I developed 13 years ago, uh, I designed the database following the uh, the recommended the recommended ways of Mr. Cod, Dr. Cod. Um, he wrote a paper in the seventies, and I followed those uh, uh, guidelines up until normalization rule number three, and it worked pretty well up until this day. I believe my, the system I built like thirteen years ago seems to be working just fine right now. And there is way more data right now. And I believe that um, normalization is a, a really good way of avoiding performance issues. So basically, this is a crutch. But I'm glad it's there because uh, in most of the time, in today's era of working in teams, you are not basically, I'm not even allowed to design my own stuff I need to work with whatever the architect decided to go for, or uh, whatever the, the, the system, the original designer decided to go for. So it's not my choice anyway. I just need to handle it on my own. And it seems like Hannah is considering these people too. Anyway. Yeah, it, they call it dictionary. I wonder if I can copy this. Oh, nice. At least this was intuitive enough. I cannot move it. I want to move it. Oh, nice. I didn't know I could do that. Anyway, good to know then. Uh, yeah, that's also true. One disadvantage is the CPU load during packaging. Uh, obviously, this is this is normalization on the fly. That's why it's calling uh, it's being called compression instead of normalization. During normalization, that happens during design time. So when you create your tables, the actual compression is already done because uh, in 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 a sort of way because in some way because you already have your uh, this design already considered inside the database table. So. But here, I guess Hannah needs to do this um, in during after design time. So I guess 
it's not just to be working as regular normalization. But having said that, uh, this kind of compression is really helpful. Compacting only takes place for columns that are actually required. Oh, that's nice. Because of the uh, column storage, you know. Resolve the relevant data record for the. Okay. Let's say. Oh. Uh, What is the delta merge? We are going to see that one in a little bit because I do remember this from yesterday. And uh, who else? And unpackaging it takes place for columns that are actually required. Okay, what else? What? Say lot. Let's face it. Okay. Uh, Earth only. Okay, for all modifying operations. Yeah, I do remember this. Uh, this is the way that uh, when you have all your data in memory, you need to be very careful because um, if the power goes out, you lose everything on the RAM. And if you want to keep a track of, okay, I write everything in, in RAM memory, uh, and I try to keep parallels between what is on the hard disk and the RAM, and that's going to cost a lot of time and processing power. So we need to figure it out a way that um, it's very fast and it's very uh, uh, computational efficient, you know? So what they managed to do something really, really interesting here. Um, the strategy seems to be to, on, to have two storage areas, 
separate from each other. Uh, the run memory, the memory area where you are going to insert the data very fast, you know, and the data is going to travel uh, in and out from there very fast. You are going to insert all your changes there. And uh, from time to time, you are going to merge the data from the memory, uh, from the memory storage into the more permanent column storage. That's what I understand. It's actually here. Yeah, this memory also removes data records flagged for deletion. So basically, it's, uh, and I remember this picture here. It's really important. There we go. So what this picture describes, I'm going to use this for my notes. Uh, here, here is the read operations, and those are performed in both. In the uh, on the this is the table. This this entire white uh, white rectangle is a table, and we're going to have one column and any other number of columns. So here we are going to have the main storage, and this is our SSDs or our hard drives. Uh, no, that's wrong. It's actually to this. Uh, or solid store drives or solid store devices or hard disk drives or whatever device you have to store, that's going to be here, okay? The main storage. This is permanent storage. And the delta storage is where your, uh, your more volatile data is going to receive. So here, um, inside, in, this is uh, permanent. And down here, we're going to have the volatile. This is the volatile memory. So here, since this is running on RAM, on memory, we can insert data here and mark records for deletion here very quickly because it's RAM. And from time to time, we are going to execute this one here, Delta Merge. So this process of Delta Merging means, you know what? Take all of uh, deletions, all inserts, and uh, updates, I guess. I wonder if there are updates here. I wonder if there are updates. Uh, all of these operations and merge them into permanent memory. So, a save point, a save point is created here. And then we may we make more inserts, more deletions, and more updates. We create a secondary merge, and we create another save point. So basically, we are doing these save points over and over again. And that's it, basically. So from time to time, we are going to merge the delta storage with the main storage. And this happens on the column level. Just imagine that. It's not happening on the entire database. It's, it's not even happening on the entire table. It's happening at the column at the column level. So basically, this is how it's actually going to work. Uh, now, I do remember here uh, the MCS tables and the MCS columns views to display. These are views. I wonder if I can uh, just copy this. Play the cursor. Oh, the table room. Copy. Can I paste it? Nice. I don't want to abuse this for obvious reasons. Because uh, the second. I wonder if I can actually. Uh, maybe we. No, uh, that's just regular Zoom. Okay. Oh, well, this could be a note anyway. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, basically, I can query these views 
uh, in order to see what data is about to be uh, merged, you know, to view or display the current status of a table or its columns. Uh, these views allow you to see, for example, how much data is currently in the delta and main storage. Okay, combination of techniques. There we go. Yeah, the four techniques we described so far complement each other perfectly and reconcile each other's weaknesses. The column-based storage method enables good compression of the data. Okay. Okay, that's point number one. This compression in turn reduces memory consumption so that less main memory is needed. Okay. Insert only approach. Okay, the insert only approach with occasional is the delta merge. The delta merge is going to merge the delta storage with the main storage. So that's what's going to happen, basically. And last but not least, high performance database allows you to dispense with additional indexes, aggregates, and materialized views, further reducing your memory requirement. And wonder what do they mean with this? I don't know what materialized views is. Yes, I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. 
But I think I'm going to learn very soon. Okay. Have HANA an application server. Over time, the SATHANA database has been enhanced by SATHANA extended application services. Okay, now interesting. Yes, and for application, extended application services. Uh, annoying. I just need a little bit more space and that's it. Why I cannot do that with my pen? Cannot even, can't even, even. Yeah, I'm getting some issues here. Probably, if I don't stream uh, my learning process, I can use both of my monitors for. I can put the booking one monitor and the. Uh, and the note taking in the other monitor. Maybe that will be great. Okay. Anyway. Oh, come on. Uh... I keep pressing the button here in my pen again, messing things. Yeah, Stabhana XX is, is becoming not solid. in a solution place going to be replaced with Satana X S A What is the difference here? Hmm. Is the successor of Satana XS has been renamed to the Satana XS classes model? Obsolete, been replaced, renamed. We're going to be renamed as Safhana says okay.
with the intro sad note with the introduction of sad hana version 2 sps02 sad hana xs has been officially deprecated instead only sad hana XA, xsa will be used in the future okay so forget about xs classic model i didn't even learn it so i guess i'm just fine <laughs> But people that actually learn uh, access, I guess they are not so fine. Okay, uh, the time is about to run out. Let's see if we can hear the bell this time. Okay, this uh, this is not going to work. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Oh, that's that's loud. Okay. That's a loud bell. Uh, let's see Twitter for a while. Takes a lot. <laughs> nice bow. <laughs> why 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 oh that's why <laughs> yeah this is me dude when i'm debugging my own code <laughs> heroes there is a heroes tournament today Defeated the fighting tree. Oh man. Want to watch those live? Huh? What? I need that in my life. With a Wii U controller. That's something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if. Uh, 3D models give me a lot of uh, flexibility. Like, for example, I can move my hands around. Uh, I wonder if um, with the new update for B tubing software, you can uh, move your hands around in 2D. Motion tracking is basically the, um, the ability for you to express yourself way better. And, and it's, uh, it really helps, I guess, I think. Mm. I actually do. Um, I am 40 years old, so I didn't, I wasn't born with a, with a smartphone in my hand. So I, I actually managed to help other people <laughs> with their cars. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this one of 2,629. Oh no. Who made this? <laughs> Why? Why? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. You're a problem. You can fix my print. Ah, uh, it cringe. Oh my god, it's it's going on right now, or did it already happen? Like one hour ago. Okay. Why, God? Why? Uh, 
Yeah, I am afraid to go into the exterior anymore, so... I am this close, just, uh, and this close, this close to buy, um, a VR headset and, and never, and surrendering seeing the sun again. I am, I am this close to deciding that. Yeah. I am playing a, I am playing a video game called, um, uh, Elite Dangerous. It's really fun. Uh, and I've been obsessing about it. But I believe that uh, because uh, uh, you basically play as a, a space uh, a spaceship commander, and you fly around in your ship, and everything is very sim. It's a it's a simulator of what would be if you could actually uh, travel in the space. Ow! I need to lower the volume for that. Okay, let's keep working. Uh, I, I read this yesterday. Oh, that's actually really important for me. Can I copy that? The, the it's way too small. So I guess these notes are really big. Are actually really big. Okay. Well, I guess that's enough. Oh, come on. I believe that 28 maybe. Okay. Bring your own language concept. Uh, that's a uh, first time for me, which allows for a large number of different languages. For example, Python runtime environments have been available since the release of Sahana 2. So we can, uh, hey, that's actually important. Uh, I do work, I, I had work with, um, with all of these three languages, with, uh, with, no, with JavaScript, with Node.js, Python and Java. So I know a stranger for those. And I've been working on those in real projects, actually. So I'm not scared of them, thankfully. I just wish that more people get in, got into learning those languages because they are really useful. My phone died. The batteries run out. Yeah, the battery run out. Well, now I don't have a way. Really, no. When I suppose, uh, let's say like, uh, when will be a good time to finish this? Let's say, um, 
8 p.m. my time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. That will be a good time to finish the stream. Um, probably continue tomorrow. Maybe not on a stream. Uh, I'm going to finish a student off a stream. For some reason, um, I am I advance way faster when I'm not talking. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. Mm. Trainers bundle. Special feature. Okay, several options there, but uh, if, if I had to be honest, I don't think I'm going to be touching those in a very long time, if ever. That's why I'm not taking notes for those. Geodata, that's interesting. That's actually interesting. Geographical data. Um, I'm thinking about since uh, the elections are coming to my country, I'm from Mexico, uh, and I, I still have around three years before the next elections come. And I was thinking about building uh, an application, a database application that allows people to know uh, beforehand who is winning the race for the election, you know? So I was thinking uh, probably allow this person here to install an app on his or her phone, you know? And this app will connect to the cloud, you know, and would allow this app to send data, store it in a database, very simple architecture, I guess, you know, store the data in a database. And once it's already stored in the database, well, uh, have a website. This could be a website. This could be another app, maybe. This could be another app. Um, basically, uh, show who's winning. But what what does this have to do with Geo Data? Well, if uh, this is the area. I may like to have, um, let's say, like circumferences, depending on who is winning, you know? You see? So if this is the area, probably, or if I'm getting a map, for example, I may like to say, well, on this district, the red team has so many boats, on the blue team, we have so many boats. So you can visually, you be um, basically follow around who's winning the race way easier. So this will imply that one, people will need to download an app in order to gather this data in the first place. In Mexico, in Mexico, we actually, um, in, in our election system, we had people, uh, we, we give the, the parties involved the option to send a representative to every uh, to every place where people goes to to cast their vote, you know. So we have a uh, the the person that is going to make. Uh, we have here. Okay, I need to. So the idea is this: we have the person here. 
that is going to cast the boat and he is going or he or she are going to go into this place to cast the boat you know maybe here there is a little uh, cardboard box where this person is going to get in and cast the boat uh, there is an option in mexico that you can send a representative for your party and most parties with resources especially human resources because these are people they tend to send from three to, to one person at least. So it could be that uh, our, a single party may have three or more representatives and uh, the other party may just have one. So this app could be useful for all of these people. How? If I uh, give them an app, you know what? Download this app. You can take a picture of the certificate of the election. At the end of the day, there is a, like, a, like a document where you can see who is first place, who is second place, who is third place, and basically know who won the race for, for every uh, election charge, basically. There we go, for every election charge. So you are having these options, okay? So I will get them, you know what? If you download my app, you can take a picture of this document here. You see? You can send the picture through the app into the cloud, and that's just the picture, because uh, I'm not going to have uh, machine learning on anything. I'm not going to use this picture to read any data, just for validating uh, the entries later, maybe. Okay, so you can take the picture of this, and now, and after that, the app is going to show you, okay, so how many votes did this, pe this person got? How many votes did this one got? How many votes did this one got? So basically a basic form, and you introduce a number, you see? And this is the data that I am actually concerned about because with this, you go back to the cloud, you, intro, you introduce that data into the database. And now I have people on the ground fetching data about the election on every single um, casting boat place or whatever you call it, okay? So this application is basically fetching data. So how would I convince these people to download the app and use it properly? Well, I may give them access to the website or a special app that can give them the results of the entire election. Um, and this data is going to be basically being gathered from every single person. So if I, at least I have one single person in with the app in every single place where they can cast their votes uh, that will be more than enough for me so if i have more people with the down with the with the app the more the merrier why because now i have several people let's say four people here i have four people here sending data to my database for the same place. So what, which means that if I have these four people, they obviously are going to have sometimes different, they are going to find themselves with different um, version of reality, let's say. So maybe somebody made a mistake. Uh, or, or some others not. In the worst case scenario, every single one of them is going to have a different version of reality of the, of the result. The, the objective here is to make them all the same. They all must be equal. Why? Because there is just one truth. The one truth. There is not my truth or his truth. No, that doesn't exist. That is just the truth, okay? Who won, how many votes did everybody got, and that's it. 
okay so uh let's say that uh the blue team lost but uh this person here doesn't want to leave that out in the open because it may he wants to save face let's say so he says you know what we got 13 votes and we actually won which is false okay uh, but there is nothing stopping him to upload this false data into the cloud. But what happens if this person comes here and say, no, we got 15 votes, you got three votes, you lost by a, mar by a large margin, actually. Okay? So this is false. Okay? And we have another person that say, okay, uh, I thought we got 13 votes, but he lost for three votes, okay? And the last guy is, is saying, you know what? No, we got 15 votes, and let's say that, uh, uh, not three. And he got uh, five votes. So who's saying the truth, okay? So this, is data gathering. If I want to keep it simple, because I am a solo developer, what I will do here is, you know what? I'm going to gather all of this data and probably just, and probably just uh, say, you know what? This entire uh, place is in controversy. Okay? So what I'm going to do is send to every single one of these people a notification, Notif get, get notified and tell them, you know what? Your data has not been entered, it's, in, uh, it's been contested by other people. And uh, I will show them the picture of the document with the results and the opportunity to re-enter the values. You know, if they keep uh, lying to me or to the system, this is going to repeat itself, okay? It may come to the point that we never get to know the truth in the, in the database itself, but the picture, a picture of the document it's very hard to falsify, you know, especially because uh, every single one of them is going to receive a copy. Well, at least for, for party. This party is going to receive one copy. This party is going to receive one copy. So if your copy is, is not legible, it's not legible, well, that's one thing. But uh, that the other guy has its, uh, its own copy is not legible is that... Um, that may happen too, but uh, it's not likely. So in the end, outside the, the place where you go to cast your boat, there is a really big sign with the actual results. So you can actually take a picture of that too. You know, you can take a picture of this with a camera, I guess. I don't know how to... Throw a camera? That's a really oh no. Stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too late. Don't ban me. Uh well a camera. Let's just do from view. There we go. You can take a picture here of this and use that to upload. The 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 importance of the picture is that the human beings are going to be uh, validating this data. So what's going to happen? Perhaps these people, um, they keep lying to themselves or whatever, but they are not alone. There is somebody in charge of them. So what I'm going to do is appeal to those people. Those people are going to be the ones with access to the website here. And they are going to have their own accounts, etc. And the idea is that uh, the administrators for every single party 
are going to get access to the website or to the app or whatever, you know, and they are going to be receiving these notifications, you know. Okay, I got a notification, you know what? Uh, but I got this picture now, okay? So, okay, uh, it's in contest and I had several values, but I don't know which one is true, okay? I see the picture and I see that none of, either none of these guys knows what's going on or I just enter. I may just enter the values directly here, okay? I enter in the values myself because they, these guys doesn't know how to do that. And now it's a valid one. Now, this one here is a valid entry. And I accept it. So probably I am giving too much power now that I'm talking about it. Probably I'm giving too much power to these guys here. Maybe it's more than enough that they just take a picture and upload it and allow this one here or a team of people to access the website and do this validation and data entry into the database. I would love to allow these people to do that job. Okay? And maybe version one will be that. And you know what? You only need one of these. And without data validation, you can enter whatever you want, but you require to use a picture to upload. Okay. And basically, allow the human beings here to discipline their, resor their human resources. You know what? Uh, you are not helping me out. Uh, you know what? You are helping me out and validate the work of these people, basically. But I've been rambling about something else now. Uh, it's 8 p.m. o'clock. Well, I guess uh, I ramble a lot. Wow. Geodata, the importance of geodata, I didn't even. Do I delete this? Yeah, it's useless. This was, most, this was more like a, like a rambling more than actually studying, but uh, in conclusion, geodata, very useful. <laughs> That's the conclusion for today. Well, thank you for coming in and see you later. I'm going to take a break and um, perhaps spend the rest of the night playing uh, uh, video games, you know. I'm going to be a student tomorrow uh, outside the stream, you know. Oh, hello there. Are you Russian? I don't recognize your name. <laughs> but I believe you are Russian for the name. I don't know. Uh, the stream is going off. But uh, thank you for coming in anyway. If you can understand me of that is. Well, geodata, very useful. Uh, I'm going to keep a student tomorrow and see you later. Goodbye.